Our first cut at representing GUIs isn't actually good enough. We can represent any of the individual elements of a GUI, like pick a fruit or apple, banana, coconut, but we have no way of putting two of these things together to make a bigger GUI. So let's enrich our model of what a GUI is to, uh, to handle putting together these pieces. And let's do it by having two more ways of forming GUIs. Let's have a vertical stacking rule, which means if we've got a GUI like pick a fruit with apple, banana, coconut, and another one like OK and cancel together, that we can stack them together vertically, and another horizontal stacking uh, form, which is you have two GUIs, um, and you're going to put them together next to each other. And then using horizontal stacking and vertical stacking, and assuming just that you center things as you line them up, um, then we're able to actually implement this whole GUI and not just its individual parts. If we're going to do that, that means that uh, vertical stacking and horizontal stacking are two new kinds of GUIs, two new variants in our data type, and each of them has two pieces, the, the two sub-GUIs that they're putting together. So let's go over to our code, and we're going to modify this program to introduce these new ideas. And what you'll see as we modify this program is we're kind of replaying the diffs of the steps you would take in the design recipe. So the first thing we did is this data analysis, but now we've We've decided that we want vertical elements, where a vertical element combines two things vertically, and a horizontal element for horizontal combining. Uh, both of these vertical and hor horizontal cases have two parts. So a vertical has a top element, which is a GUI, and a bottom element, which is a GUI. So we can put any two GUIs together by stacking them vertically, or uh, left and right, for horizontal stacking. That means all of these examples are still going to be fine GUIs, but we can also have a GUI like a test of read screen of vertical stacking, picking that new case that we have, where we will have a label uh, like pick a fruit and then a choice list. Uh, like, well, let's make it pick a color actually. Let's make a slightly different color. A choice list with red, green, and blue. Okay, so that is a whole GUI, right? We picked the vertical case, and then for the top, I had to write down a GUI, and I picked label, and that when I when I had this nested choice, and then for the bottom part where I had the nested choice, I picked choice which is not complete yet, because if I consult choice, I need a list of strings and a number. So let's add a number that says red is currently selected. So now we have a GUI with two parts. It's got a label, pick a color, and then just below that, it's got a list of choices, red, green, and blue. If we read the screen, we should get pick a color, and red, and green, and blue. So we have one big list of all the text that's on that GUI. To finish our tests, our examples slash tests, uh, with this revised data definition, we also need a horizontal example. Horizontal. And then for horizontal, we need a GUI for the left. I'll pick button. I'll say it's a disabled OK button. And then for the right, I get to pick again. Let's put a cancel button that's enabled. When I have these nested choices, there are all different kinds of choices that I could make inside there. We don't have to try out every different possible nested combination. That would go on forever. Um, as long as you know we follow the recipe and as long as we hit all of these outermost cases, um, these initial cases, then it's going to provide pretty good testing for our program. Meanwhile, if that is our GUI, we have those two parts. We're passing it to read screen. Uh, the results we should get back are there's an OK button and a cancel button. Okay, now you can see here there's an error at the bottom of my screen. It's showing me what's going wrong. It says you did not include a case for vertical and horizontal. So it already knows that I haven't finished my program, I haven't finished my template even. If we think back through the template step, then when we were making the template for read screen, we added label button choice, and then we would also add vertical, which has a top and a bottom and we have top to work with, and we have bottom to work with, and horizontal, where we have the left to work with and the right to work with. But our template would not be complete, because what is the type of T? T, 
the top thing is a GUI. So we should be wrapping this with a call to some function that works on GUIs. Fortunately, we have a relevant function that works on GUIs. It's called read screen. And the same for the bottom. So we don't have to make another template or even thinking about making another template. We can just use the one that we're already working on. So those would be what the two template clauses look like for read screen once we add horizontal and vertical. And now we can finish up the program by looking at what to do. Read screen of t in the vertical case. In this example where we have vertical, t is the label pick a color. Read screen of label pick a color is just going to give us the list pick of color. What we're trying to do is produce a list that starts that way, but it also has more. It has red, green, and blue. If we look at read screen B, B corresponds to this choice. Read screen of B is going to be the list red, green, blue. So we want a list that combines those two lists. It just appends them together. That is what the append function does. It takes two lists and appends them together. So we can combine those results with append. The reasoning is going to work out very similarly to horizontal. You can see how we're going to get append for that result as well. Right, because we get list OK, list cancel, append those two together to get list cancel. Let's run our tests. Let me get rid of this stray white space, and then run our tests. And we'll see once again all of our tests pass. Okay, so we were able to modify our GUI data definition and replay the individual steps, which tell us. Uh, of the design recipe, which tells us which pieces of our program need to change to, to work well for this new extended data definition. You can always make more tests. Um, one way of writing tests is, uh, especially when data gets big like this, is to define a shorthand GUI 1, here's a particular GUI, and then we can make a test that uses GUI 1, test read screen GUI 1. If we read all of the text in this particular GUI, then we get pick a fruit, apple, banana, Okay, fruit, apple, banana, coconut, okay, cancel. Right, and then we might use GUI, GUI 1 for writing examples of other programs that we write that work on GUIs. Let's double check that that new test passes okay. Uh, it doesn't. I've got a problem. This time the problem is in the test because I forgot a colon right there in predicting the result. Let me correct that prediction and now the test does pass. Okay, so we have a minimum number of tests up here by covering every case in the data definition. Often it makes sense to uh, often it makes sense to throw in an extra test or two. The more important thing that I want you to know notice at the moment though is if you look at this function definition and the data definition, the shapes correspond. We had a define type GUI um, and read screen GUI has the same number of cases. And where the type GUI refers back to itself in the vertical and horizontal cases, the function also refers back to itself. The vertical case in the type definition refers back to itself twice. The function refers back to itself twice. So this is what we mean by the shape of a function matching the shape of the data definition.